What's up, y'all? We're back here with the Aaron Gordon Podcast. I'm here with my special guest, Ross Collins. What it do, what it do. So, you know, we're just going to get into it. Um, obviously, we grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana. Both of us, you know, lived in the same neighborhood, played, you know, all the way up through high school, played with the same people, you know. How was it growing up in Indiana, just playing basketball, uh, playing football, playing a ton of sports? Um, it was an escape, I'd say. We know, uh, being from Indianapolis, it's either, like, play a sport or, like, you know, the streets, you know what I'm saying? So it was good to to not to have a choice, you know, to uh, be out the way, to like make friends that wanted to do something with their life and be around people who wanted to go higher, you know what I'm saying? So that's the the main thing I got out of playing sports because um, I never really enjoyed it. <laughs> like I never really enjoyed it. I never was like the go-to guy on my team as far as hooping. So I was always just playing my role. Mm-hmm. But um, it was it was good to just be around people who, who wanted better for themselves, who had like visions of doing something more grand than just being stuck in the city. Not to say that's a bad thing, but just to have a vision. But that's that's probably what I got out of uh, sports is just having a vision, having some purpose. For sure. Last basketball question. You played in probably the greatest high school game ever your junior year against oh, here you uh, go. Gary here you Harris go. and Zach. I mean, I'm <laughs> telling you, everyone knows about this. So, you know, before we get into music, you know, what was that game like? You know what I'm saying? Because obviously that's the game that I wish I could have played in because that was probably the greatest high school game of all time, especially yeah. in Indiana. A lot of people are deeming that, you know, years from now. You know, what was that like playing in it? You know what I'm saying? There's only, what, what 16 to 18 players that played in that game. So, right, you know, right. Um, it, was a, it was a great experience, I can say that. Like, it was so loud in there, bro. I couldn't hear nothing. Like, I couldn't hear a coach, Doug. I couldn't hear, like, the players. Like, it was just, like – very loud, but you had to block all that out and, like, had to guard Gary, you know what I'm saying? And it was, like, going so well because the first half, bro, only had four points, you know what I'm saying? We was up. Uh, we was containing Zach, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it was just – it was it was on the road, bro. And, like, it felt yeah. real good seeing, like, what was it, like 4,000 people or something yeah. like that. It was packed down, you know what I'm saying? Like, you hearing everything, like, <laughs> it was crazy. And then, you know – game is going on and we're going back and forth now this is when pat coming fresh off them yeah. cramps you know what i'm saying uh i remember this is just what i remember like when it's got got to like game time like last two minutes yeah i was just like okay i'm on the bench the pat in guarding gary harris gary harris done popped off second half got like 30 in the second half or something like yeah. that uh and i just and i remember uh what happened? oh yeah wade mr free throw yeah. Darius missed the free throw. And I think Ronnie might have missed the free throw. You know what I'm saying? And they capitalized off each of them misses to the point yeah. where we was tied up. And it was like, Pat got the rebound. This is like when his seconds left. He's dribbling. Should have passed it to Ronnie, but it's in the past. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, <laughs> Ronnie would have brought it up the court and because Pat got called for the travel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, travel, like, three seconds left. Now Doug done took Pat out, put me in for the last three seconds. And I just remember that play. Gary Harris breaking left, getting the ball like a little bit behind half court, spinning off Wade, spinning right back into me. I put a hand up, bang yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Like it was yeah. just, it was just like I was in shock after that. Like after that, I didn't even believe it. I didn't believe that he made that shot. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, literally that was like the craziest thing you could imagine to happen. Happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, as far as just playing it, it was fun, man. It was exciting. Up until the last three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I already know. So I come in next year. You're a senior. I'm a freshman. We had a great year. And then you go off to college and uh, you play at St. Francis. And then, um, you know, what was that deciding factor to say, now, okay, I want to get into music? So, like, I had developed insomnia in college. Like, I wasn't going to sleep till, like, mm-hmm. actually, I wasn't sleeping. Like, you know, uh, we had 5 a.m. workouts. So, like, I would just finish uh, my homework for the night. Uh, chill with like my friends. What we would do, we would just like gamble. You know how I am with the dice. I like to use dice, like, <laughs> dice back yeah. then. And uh, we would play uh, Kemp's. Like we just couldn't sleep. It was a it was a really small school, and you was only there to hoop or to be like a nurse. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like we would just be up, not develop the insomnia, and like I already was going there, kind of like knowing I didn't want to be there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I tried to just thug it out. And, uh, during that time, I was trying to thug it out and play ball. 
I started reading super heavy, bro, like Malcolm X, uh, Marcus Garvey, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, like just all these author, interesting authors. Um, and I just started writing, bro. It's just kind of, everything kind of happened uh, as if it was a dictation. Like I, something was happening through me kind of because, you know, I didn't know, I didn't really didn't have nothing to do outside of basketball. I didn't know what I would do, you know? So um, once I, I found a liking for the writing, uh, my sophomore year, when I came back, I just was like, cause I had got redshirted my freshman year. Uh, when I came back, I just kind of was like, man, talk to my mom about it, talk, talk to my coaches, talk to my girl. And I was just like, I think I'm done with basketball. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I'm just not getting nothing out of it. I don't have no joy. It was kind of becoming depressing, you know what I'm saying? Um, to the point where I was start journaling. And when I started journaling, that's when I started first writing poetry, uh, from poetry. I went to rap and from rap, I went to just start recording, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so when I left the Franny, I'm back at St. Francis. I mean, I'm back at uh, Ivy Tech, you know? And that's when things kind of got dark because I was writing and stuff, but I kind of was, I'm back in Indianapolis, you know? So like I'm around people who probably wasn't good for me. I'm around a lot of distractions, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it really had made me, bro, it forced me, damn near off a bridge, bro, I was running. At the Monon, on the Monon Trail, like at five in the morning, mm-hmm. that's what I used to do um, when I was back home. And when I, I was on the Monon, bro, and I just stopped at this spot right over the river. You know that little river on the Monon? Yeah. And, bro, I climbed on the little uh, railing, and I was about to jump, bro. Like, I was just kind of over life. I feel like I wasn't going nowhere. I was running every day, but I just wasn't going nowhere, you know what I'm saying, as far as life went. I feel like mm-hmm. I was going in circles. I feel like I was in a consistent misery, you know? Mm-hmm. And when I got off of it, like I had, I was about to let go, and I had like had this kind of like an outer body experience, bro, where I uh, could see into if I decided to live, I could see what what, what I would become. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I got all like I climbed down, I just start like got into like a little ball, and I was crying and stuff. And mm-hmm. then after I got done crying, I went to the Books a Million right at uh like on what is that Meridian or. Ditch right by North Central. Yeah. Not too far from North Central and stuff. Um, bought me like four journals, bro. And I I, I ain't stopped writing since. Um, I, I went to Ball State the next year mm-hmm. and just took writing courses and English courses. And I knew whether I graduated or not, which I didn't, I'm like 30 credits away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was moving to California and I was doing music. Like I knew it already. Like in 2015 is when I decided, all right, I'm doing music. You know what I'm saying? Like not on some dropped out of school, I'm gonna be a rapper. Not, not on that, but like <laughs> yeah. dropping out of school and like hitting rock bottom and then building from there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Hitting rock bottom and then start building from there. You know. So what was it like getting into the industry? Was it tough? Obviously you explained some of it, but was it tough? Like how was the mental aspect of getting into it? It's, it's still tough, bro. Like I got maybe like one pinky in the door. Like I wrote, mm-hmm. wrote some records for some people, did some stuff for some artists and stuff. But, um, it's hard, bro. It's a it's a crab in a bucket mentality when you at the level I'm at. Um, people who can connect you with higher ups try to use you. Uh, bro, I done been through it out here, bro. I done been played by like managers. I done uh, been played by artists. Like if people really knew what it take to do this music stuff, bro. I, I don't think a lot of people would. Like people ain't. You gotta be really built for this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Like you gotta you can make the hardest song in the world, but if you ain't got no nobody to connect the dots for you, you're gonna have, you're gonna be stuck. You know what I'm saying? So it's more than just making music. Like you kind of, you kind of mature as a person when you're doing, when you're on this kind of journey because it's all on you, you know? Like you gotta create everything, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be a marketing person. You gotta be the artist. You gotta be the the, the investor. You gotta, you gotta do everything, you know what I'm saying? So, so it, it can get difficult but this is something I chose, you know what I'm saying? I can't, and I ain't gonna let my process uh, get in the way of my promise, which is like making it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm just enjoying the process right now. So what was that decision to move to Los Angeles? Like, was it tough or, you know, was it just something that you just, all of a sudden you thought of one day? How did that process go about? Um, no, it was tough because uh, in the midst of all of that, I had got kicked out of my mama crib, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So uh, I wasn't talking to her either. And like, everybody know I got mama's boy tat on my chest, that's my girl. So um, this is around the time I had started making decisions for myself. You know, like up until that point, I really 
had never made a decision for myself. I was always doing it for somebody else or somebody else told me to do it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So um, it was it was difficult telling my mom. But after that, it was just like, let's do it. I couldn't wait. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't wait for August to come around and for me to dip me and Briz. You know, uh, I wanted to go to Atlanta originally, but um, California makes the most sense. You know what I'm saying? Why did you like, choose um, L.A. over Atlanta? Uh, because like I, I was, I'm still with Bridge. You know, I'm married now. Yeah. Um, and she had got into uh, graduate school for accounting. Oh, yeah, uh, that's her dope. choices, huh? Yeah, yeah I said that's good. dope. Yeah, for sure. And her choices was like Georgia, uh, USC, um, Tennessee. Like she had every offer you could imagine. Yeah. But, um, we was gonna go to ATL, but she said they program accounting program just wasn't high scale. Yeah. And she said, I can go to USC. And they had like the number two program at the time. And uh, it's California. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like dreams could come true there. That's the place everybody eventually want to get to. Everybody want to go to Hollywood. Everybody want to, you know what I'm saying, be with the stars and all that stuff. So I was just yeah. like, I'm sure that we can make that happen out here too. This is just as much as we could in, uh, in Atlanta. So we, we both agreed on that and made that happen. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the pros and cons of, of being in the industry of L.A.? I know it's a lot different than, you know, Atlanta or somewhere like Indianapolis or Chicago. What's the differences out there? Like, what are the pros and cons of it? Um, I would say the pros is um there is a lot more unity out here. So even though, like, it's some, it's, it, you get wrapped up in some BS, um, artists do want to work. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not that the weather's good. You can say that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, like you can, um, pros, bro. That's that's how gritty this industry is. Like the pros is like, I feel like I haven't yet reached the pros. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm in a stage of, it's gonna be a lot of cons, and we are yeah. gonna see if you really build for this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the pros is I can just say people are working. Like you can work with anybody, an artist. Um, I can go to any open mic. You know what I'm saying? And like I can be heard. You know what I'm saying? So I would say that the opportunity to just be heard is probably the greatest pro along with artists wanting to work and like being serious about it. And the cons is just, um, you're going to do a lot of spending. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's yeah. very expensive out here. Uh, you're going to get told no a lot. You know what I'm saying? People going to spin you and tell you one thing and do the complete opposite. Uh, you got to really earn your keep out here. Like this ain't no place. For, for no soft stuff to to say the least um and then also a pro is you'll you get to you get to know yourself you know what i'm saying um i've i've changed dramatically from what where i what i was to where i am and that was all because of this experience like i had to make choices of whether i was going to create or react to certain situations so um i would just say yeah the pros is just the people, uh, meeting, meeting people, you know, getting mm -hmm. out there and the cons is just like a lot of cons. I don't, I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> you know what I'm sure. It's just, just trying to get through it. So, um, you know, you talk about your lifestyle changing and your lifestyle being different, you know, in what ways has it changed? Like, what are some things that you, you do differently now than you did when you were in Indianapolis or when you were at Ball State or, or St. Francis? Mm. Um, yeah, the biggest, yeah, Okay, so in that, bro, like you know how I was in that, bro. I was just yeah. hot, you know what I'm saying? Like I was just ready to do whatever. I didn't really care, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I wasn't going for no weak stuff. Like don't talk to me crazy, you know what I'm saying? All that type of stuff. Uh, I really did. I, I would say I wasn't using my my mind and my soul. I was just kind of like a body, just existing, like a, you know what I'm saying? And when I moved out here, like bro, this is how I start my morning, bro. I wake up. I meditate, I do yoga, I go for a run or a walk, I eat a banana, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I have a routine, like, I just, I'm more calm, like, I'm at peace. Um, I've been working on myself as, like, a human, because, like, in this life, we just go through experiences where stuff is not going to go your way, you know, and you got to be able to create instead of react, because I used to react a lot, and I would react negatively, so now I just use those times to create anytime I'm feeling negative I'm gonna I'm a create something you know what I'm saying so mm -hmm. I would just say the biggest lifestyle change was using my using my mind and my soul you know what I'm saying leading with my soul uh not being a hothead you know what I'm saying uh walking away from stuff and situations 
and just staying uh, focused on the main goal, which is just like being better every day. Every day I just want to be a better artist, a better person, a better husband, a better homie. Like I just want to be better every day. You know what I'm saying? So you got married last year. Um, how, how has that been? And, you know, have things, you know, progressed um, in terms of just your life, you know, changing because of that? Bro, that's the best decision I ever made, bro. Like, I don't care what nobody talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, having you know, girls or hoes, whatever people want to call it. Like, it's overrated. It's a headache, one. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you got to juggle too much. You know what I'm saying? You got to hide stuff. Like, being married was the best decision I've ever made, bro. Uh, my wife, Briz, she is a hundred. You know what I'm saying? She, uh, she, without her, bro, probably wouldn't even be here, bro. She know everything about me that, like, I've never told the public. Like, she's the one, she's, she's my secret keeper. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even though, like, I'm not, like, out here keeping, like, secrets or whatever, but she's the person when I'm down, she a hundred percent lifts me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what I'm saying, because I'm a person when I'm down, I can push people away. She's going to come closer and she's going to figure out the problem with me and she's going to help me through it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah. I, I respect that 110%. You know, uh, yeah, she's great, bro. It's, it's been the greatest life. Like, you finally have somebody to share stuff with, um, somebody you can just be vulnerable with. You know what I'm saying? And then it's, just, it's like we locked in. So, like, even when we are having troubles in our relationships, in our relationship, bro, we really sit down and talk through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And become better after that conversation. You know, uh, just staying in communication, I would say, was the greatest thing about being married. It's like, you got to talk about it. You can't walk mm -hmm. around it. You can't ignore it. We talk about it. You know what I'm saying? We don't go to sleep mad at each other or nothing like that. We get everything out if we feeling like a way about something, you know? So yeah. being, being married, the best decision I made. So what are some of the things that you've done in Los Angeles in terms of your music career? Like, do you do shows? Where do you do your shows at? Um, whoever you collab with, certain things like that. Um, I, 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 right now the shows I'm doing is like open mics, uh, mm -hmm. some bars, like I go out to Hollywood and just perform at like bars or clubs. Um, you ever I go out like, to Santa Monica and do, and do some stuff like that? Not yet. Cause you gotta like, you gotta find your aesthetic. It's yeah. a lot of, like, it's a lot of places you can do open mics, but say you go into an open mic that likes to hear just spoken word. I'm yeah. not going to go in there and sing, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. like uh, so you got to find where, where your sound is, you know, yeah. where people want to hear you at. And um, right now that's being Hollywood, like West LA area. Um, I actually been singing a lot more recently, so I could hit Santa Monica. That's actually something you yeah. can just put in my head. So that's something I'm going to have to look out for. Um, but the shows has just been like open mics or pull, pull up. It's this thing called So Far Sound out here that's that's dope they hold these concerts for up and coming artists um, you know brett gray brett gray um, um have you seen on my block? who sings what have you seen on my block on netflix no i haven't uh, okay this is show on, on netflix um called on my block uh brett gray he's he plays as a character named jamal uh, mm -hmm. He does music as well, and I collabed with him um, on the, on my EP called Lost in Love. We did a song together called Dance in the Rain. And, uh, that's probably, like, the biggest artist that I've done something with that I can yeah. speak about because some stuff, you do stuff with artists, and you can't – you got to sign yeah. stuff. But um, I've worked with some artists. Uh, uh, none, none, none to me worth, like, bragging about. Like, I just yeah, treat it yeah. as a job. You know what I'm saying? But – um we got some stuff coming out that's going, what I did, I did with some artists that's going to be dope. Like this summer, yeah. like we got, it's going to be hard, bro. It's going to be super hard. I, I work with a lot of artists on this project that I got coming in June and they, you'll hear them. <laughs> yeah. So I know LA is pretty much shut down like the East coast, you know, so what have you been up to just the past, you know, week or so since we're all in quarantine and pretty much on shutdown? Um, well, I was hiking a lot cause that's what I like to do out here. I like to hike. But um, last Friday, they just shut down all the the, the hikes and beaches because yeah. people was coming out and having Corona parties and last day on earth. Yeah. And, and people <laughs> just are not all the way there. Yeah. But um, now, bro, I just do a lot of reading. Like, you know, I do a lot of reading, meditate more. Like, I usually meditate twice a day. I'm doing like three to four times a day now. 
um, mm -hmm. writing way more often, uh, spending time with my wife because she and I had opposite schedules up until this point. Um, just trying to keep busy, bro. Like I'm really a homebody anyway. So like this, this my vibe. You feel me? Like yeah. Uh, uh, so nothing's really changed besides um, I can't go hiking. That's the only thing. Like that, that messes me up because I hike like four or five times a week. Yeah. So uh, lastly, um, you know, let's talk about your relationship with you know some of the guys you know back in high school. You know, like Chandler and Wade and Darius and you know everyone pretty much that I know that went to your way, you know, talk about them and, you know, uh, cause I'm pretty sure a lot of people know them around Indianapolis, you know, just talk about your relationship with them and how it grew and certain things like that. Uh, Weezy Wade, that's my best friend. He was the, he was my best man at the way. Yeah. Sure, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, short in the mud. He ain't gonna never grow in <laughs> great. But, uh, yeah, that's my dog, bro. Like he helping me build this, uh, brand. Like I created or started a label called Fortier. Um, forever the family is what it stands for. And mm -hmm. like, we just, we just building, bro. Like me and him, we talk as much as we can. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm his, uh, godfather to, to his daughter, Carmen. Mm -hmm. Um, that's my road dog, bro. Like you see way you'll probably see me. Like if we, if I'm in the city or something. Yeah. Uh, big Gary, that dude is crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just that. any of your friends, you can just name any of your friends, anybody that helped you, you know, get to where you're at today. Um, your, okay. your inspiration to to how you got into music and, and you know just throughout your life, um, bro. That's crazy, bro. Because really, it's just uh, way from that group that like yeah. you know the group I grew up with. Yeah, it's really just way, bro. Um, mm -hmm. along the way on this journey, bro, you'll see that you can't take everybody with you. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, Chandler, oh, I can't forget about that. that's my boy, Chandler, my boy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, everybody else, bro. I like. We just on different paths, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 mind state back home, bro, can be kind of low, you know. Um, not yeah. to speak on anybody's intelligence or growth or anything like that, but we just not thinking the same, and we definitely not seeing the same. So I just gotta. It's all love to all my homies and people who I grew up with to get to where I am, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I keep in Wade is like my dog from that group, like yeah, Wade. You know what I'm saying? Um, everybody else is like they my dog still but I don't I don't talk to them like that you know what I'm saying yeah like, for sure you know what I'm saying it's so, like, so um, you know any uh, have there been any new activities that you've been doing since quarantine started you said reading oh uh, bro I just ordered some coloring books <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just ordered some coloring books bro um, yeah, I'm about to start coloring I got mad puzzles, but you know, I like I already did them all. Yeah. Um, shit. Some video games aren't good. Bro, I don't got no system, bro. That's that's, that's something that I. Uh, that's something that I like. It's not. I don't. I don't have no need for it. I got books. Like yeah. You know, like right behind you, I got. You see that's my bookshelf. You see that? Yeah. That's 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 my game system, man. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I just I just read, bro. Like I, I just read. Like I don't I don't play no games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. But um tell everyone where they can follow you at, uh where to stream your music at. No doubt. Uh follow me on Instagram, underscore Ross Collins underscore, same as Twitter, underscore Ross Collins underscore. Um rotation just dropped today. You know what I'm saying? So you can go stream that. That's out on all platforms. Uh Lost in Love, Sounds Like Summer 2, Solar. Like, we got more coming. You know, everything is out on all platforms. So you just got to type my name, Ross Collins, and I'll pop up and be right there. All right, for sure. Well, thank you, man, for joining the show today. Every time, brother. Every time. We got to do this more often, man. For sure, bro. Just let me know. No doubt. I'm a, hey, when I drop again, I'm going to let you know. All right, let me know. Let me know. I'm going to definitely talk about it on the cast. All right, no doubt, my brother. I'm going to see you. All right, for sure. Thank you for having me. All right, for sure. Thank you.